Today, I want to talk to you about limiting the damage. Let's face it, chess kids, you're almost never going to play a completely perfect game. One of the big tests of becoming a chess master one day is how do you react in a difficult position? This is almost as much of a psychological discussion as a chess discussion, but you know what? This happens in real life. Pretend you forget to turn in your homework. Oh no, you got a zero. Do you know how much a zero hurts your grade? But if the teacher says, hey, if you turn it in tomorrow, your maximum grade is an 80. Well, that's going to limit the damage a lot if you get a few points on that test. Similarly in chess, if you can hang in there in a bad position, you're going to be so much more of a fighting chess player. Now, many of you know this opening trap in the Petrov. Knight takes e5, and here, black should play d6. But if black plays knight takes e4, a lot of kids think black is losing the queen. But only if black does not limit the damage. After queen to e2, it is true that if the knight moves, knight to c6 to stubborn check wins the queen. But can you find a way here for black to limit the damage to only one pawn? Queen e7 limits the damage. And actually, white has nothing better here than to capture and allow black to play the move d6. In which case, since the knight's pinned, all white can do is defend it. And then after black takes and white takes back, it will just be a one pawn loss. Not great, but you can come back from a one pawn loss. Let's move on to our next example. By the way, most of the positions I'm showing you today come from my very own live shows on Beat Fun Master Mike. In this position, I was black and my opponent got a little bit scared about my double attack on C2. Actually, white's guarding C2 plenty of times, but my opponent got scared and played C3. Uh-oh, this is the moment where you must readjust your brain because after knight to d3, I'm sure my opponent was surprised by this move. If you had seen knight to d3, well, you would have never played c3. So here comes the big question. How do we limit the damage if we're white? Our rook's in danger, and so is our bishop. This is one of the most common mistakes I see chess kids make. They think, well, because the rook's a better piece, I have to save the rook. But let's go back to some math. Mm. Yeah, I know I'm making you do a little bit of math today. In this position, if you save the bishop by just retreating it, and I end up taking the rook, I don't think I'm going to take that pawn over there on b2, and then you take back with your queen, you lose a rook for a knight. That's two points. But if you save your rook and you lose the bishop for nothing, that's three points. You could also look at this a different way. If you lose the bishop, you are down one fighting piece. But if you lose the rook, but you get a knight back, you actually have the same number of fighting pieces. You just happen to have a slightly worse one. So remember that, chess kids. If you ever have the option of losing the exchange or losing a minor piece, you almost always want to lose the exchange, not the minor piece for free. Sometimes we also see this when it comes time to losing a piece or giving up your queen for a rook and a bishop. Hey. This is a very common thing. And I almost always give up my queen for the rook and the bishop. Number one, that's only a one point loss. Secondly, you're actually getting several fighting pieces back as opposed to just losing one. Now, unfortunately for my opponent, rook to e2 was played. I captured the bishop and with an extra piece in hand, I went on to win. This is our next example. I was white and I got a very good positional idea in my brain and I played it. Bishop takes knight. You don't see fun master my giving away bishop for knight without a good reason. And that reason is that when he takes back d5, that square is under my control the rest of the game. You can go ahead and plant a fun master Mike flag on d5 because that knight's never going to move. Now, although I'm positionally better, black could still put up a lot of resistance by guarding the bishop and stopping knight to c7. Do you see a move that does both? Yeah, you probably saw bishop to d8, and that definitely limits the damage. In fact, black's not down anything material-wise, although positionally white is much better. So that was the first chance for black to limit the damage. Now, if we go back, what happened in the actual game was the bishop went to g7, and then I made a fork. This is the second time black could have limited the damage. Any sort of simple queen move that would have forced me to capture one rook or the other would have meant only a two point loss. In fact, queen b6 is okay. But then when I took this rook, black should have just taken the knight back. Black, well, to his or her credit, tried to get fancy and take. I don't mind the creativity. The problem is when I save my rook, now black has multiple problems. Never took the knight back. And if you do take the knight back, 
my rooks get to invade, that's not limiting the damage. Now I'm going to be up material and my rooks are going to be very, very happy. They're going to play Pac-Man all across the seventh rank. I went on to win thanks to my rooks teaming up on the seventh. Here is our next example. I was black. Was this your game? Well, there's one chess kid out there who probably remembers this position more than most. And here, because most of the white pieces are coalescing on the queen side, I decided to capture the knight. And after takes, 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 oh no, there's nothing guarding the king. So I played check. The king correctly went to the H file. You don't want to go to the F file with my rook about to move here. And then I played the move queen to E3. Obviously, my pieces are doing very well. However, white could have definitely limited the damage with some careful defense. In fact, if white plays the move rook to f1, I have nothing really better than rook to f8 to team up on the pawn. But then your king can come in to defend the pawn. And actually, mm. I don't see a clear way that I'm winning material. Positionally better, but I've got a lot of work left to try to win this game. And if white gets lucky, white might even find a way to trade queens and survive. Unfortunately, after my queen went to e3, white uh, almost sort of gave up maybe by playing queen a6, and that disallows checkmate in two. That made my life so much easier. The damage was not limited. And uh, yeah, bishop to e3, time to move on to the next game. Well, I'm only human, and I think it's time that Fun Master Mike shows at least one example where I was worse, and I had to limit the damage. After having a pretty nice game, I made a big mistake here defending my pawn by bringing my bishop backward. And that allowed white to play d4. Now this is a move I was expecting and I was planning on dealing with this move by playing e4, which I played. Then my opponent hit me with d5. Oh no. Now before we get into the chess, a bit of note about psychology. Whenever I play a real life tournament and my opponent surprises me with a move, I do a little mental reset. Now, if I'm playing a real tournament, I might get up, go to the restroom, wash my face, come back and be like, OK, this is a whole new chess game. I was trying to win. Now I just have to try to hold on. I need to really think clearly by taking a little mental break. And I did that. I actually spent a little bit of time on my clock here to figure out how can I limit the damage? I've got to be very careful that I don't just lose a piece. For example, one of the worst moves would be queen straight back. And then when the pawn takes the knight, well, I'm just down a knight. This pawn remains pinned. So my first thought was, okay, I've got to get my queen off of the E file. One idea is to bring the queen over to a square like G6. But then if white is really smart, white will realize that if he's going to take my knight, he's going to lose his own knight. So maybe he should play a move like knight to H4. Then when my queen moves, he'll get a knight. I'll get the knight back. He'll stop the check on h2. I'll move my queen somewhere. Then he'll take another pawn and he'll have a very strong pawn on b7. This is a little bit better than losing a piece, but I don't like the fact that my opponent is going to have a pawn on the seventh rank. So if we go back to this position after d5 and my mental reset, I decided queen to c8 was the best move. Getting the queen off of the pin on the e file and defending b7. And here's the game. He took, I took. Now, if he takes here, obviously my queen takes back. And then he can take on f3, but I'm going to double his pawns. So he decided to capture. Oh. And now again, I don't want to let the queen in the game. Obviously, I don't want to let pawn takes pawn happen. So I played b6. And if you count the material, I'm only down one pawn. Right now, that pawn is blockaded and doubled. And no doubt, I am totally worse. But I did not get a zero on my test. And in fact, a few moves later, I kept enough pieces on the chessboard that I was actually able to find a trick. My opponent was really worried about pawn f4. So my opponent played it himself. Oh no, bishop c5. And the comeback is over. Obviously, I went on to win. And let's take a look at one last bonus example from a real life chess kid. This is a game played on Chess Kid recently. Was it yours? Well, somebody out there is jumping up and down. I'm not going to say whose it is. But after the move e5, the right move for black is d5, a counterattack and a very hard move to find. Black actually played knight to e4 and was surprised by bishop d5. Oh no, how do we save our knight? Well, turns out we actually don't save our knight, but we can limit the damage by getting as much as possible for the knight. In fact, black played a move here that made black only a little bit worse, which is much better than losing a knight. 
It's a little bit of a weird thing to say that I'm asking you to only be a little bit worse, but this is a true skill of chess. Knight oh. takes f2, gets one pawn, and after king takes, pawn oh. takes pawn discovered, check gets a second pawn, and when the king moves, we had oh. a quick trade, oh. and actually, that black pawn, it started here, and it basically captured everything. If you count the remaining material, black actually has three pawns for the piece, and white can't cast it. Now, I would rather be white, but only by a little bit. In fact, black went on to make a comeback and win this game. A fantastic job of limiting the damage. Well, boys and girls, perfection is something that only Beethoven can say he did. The rest of us sometimes have to limit the damage to be successful in our chess games.